Hey, I'm RJ Roman, and you're watching a 222 Productions review. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Roman, for the intro, and hello, everyone. My name is William from 222 Productions, and I am here to talk to you about American Ninja Warrior Season 12, the finale, part one, in approximately... Well, I mean, it's the final, so I guess there is no time limit, technically. So, I'm going to have a quick sip and get started. In spirit of the holiday season, I'm dressed up as a lumberjack, as you can see. Now, I know what you might be thinking. William, was this a costume that you were able to cobble together for literally zero dollars because you had all these items already in your house. And to that I say, no. I was originally going to wear a suit and pretend to be Donovan Matoyer for Halloween. But the problem is I already wore a suit on an A&W review last year and I didn't want to make it look like I was rehashing a costume. And so I went through all the trouble of getting this axe out of the garage and putting on this shirt that was in my closet. And do you know how long it took me to dig this hat out of the wherever it was? Like two minutes. There was a lot of work put into this costume, but I think I look great. I could make a good lumberjack with this beard and this axe and my axe. <laughs> I could chop down some trees, maybe not, you know, drink the coffee part, but, you know, have a, have a good lumberjack breakfast and be like, ah. Anyway, let's talk about American Ninja War. I'm going to hold this axe the entire time. <laughs> so, this time around, we had 28 people, one who will not be acknowledged at all, take on a 10 obstacle course. And it was uh, it was different. It was a different type of uh, episode, I'd say, but it was good. It was good. It was very bizarre in that literally no one was fast forward so far. Uh, we had I should have counted this ahead of time. Uh, let's see: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen of the twenty-eight people have been shown so far, and. No fast forwards, which um, by my count means that there's 12 left. Obviously, uh, there's one who won't be shown, so it'd be 11 left. The question is, will they show all the runs or will we resort to some fast forwarding, possibly some skipping? Who knows? Who knows? We won't know till next week. But this was quite an eventful episode indeed. One that uh, left me with a few questions in terms of the editing in previous episodes. Uh, but we'll get to those when we cross them. So the course for this time around, a little bit of difference, um, but same basic idea. Shrinking steps followed by spring forward once again. I uh, found it really odd about how like uh, one uh, semi-final had spring forward, but the other didn't, which, I mean, technically you can say maybe that's a bit of an unfair advantage, but does it really matter? Probably not, so who cares? Followed by a new episode called The Falling Shelves. Uh, three pairs of, uh, three pairs of shelves in an X formation. Makes me want to do a, want to do a crotch chop, just thinking about them. You have to hold, grab a shelf, and then it swings down. And you have to hold on. The first two, you grab from the front. But the third one, the tricky one, you got to grab from the back and hold on. That was, the, that was the tricky part. Then is the return of the Diamond Dash, making its first appearance this season. Uh, and then also making its first appearance, the return of the Spin Hopper, which is an obstacle I rather enjoy. And then we got the Warped Wall, Salmon Ladder, the return of Slam Dunk, which is another obstacle I like. Uh, and then a new obstacle called Dragon Back. Uh, so basically, it was uh, it's like a mix between the stair hopper and the double dipper in a weird way. Basically, while holding onto a bar, you have to hop up a couple of steps. I noticed that at the uh, on the back ends of each step, there's like a little there's a little lip to make sure that you you don't fall backwards. And then at the top of 
the staircase there's a slide and his slide goes into some elastic bands and then you have to uh if you if you survive the slide without you know going crooked and falling off you have to climb another set of set of steps go down another slide hop over uh the wall and you'll get to go to the final obstacle the spider trap so i would say overall this obstacle th this course was is easier than the semi-final course uh, is my general impression of it. Um, actually, I would say, actually, I think, I think the better way to describe it is it is, the, the front half is harder than the semi-final episodes, but the back half is easier. And that's largely because of the corkscrew was a, was a big factor for that. And, and the dungeon too, honestly. Uh, but the corkscrew was a huge stopgap. I think it's safe to say that uh, Slam Dunk is easier then corkscrew, not you know, not that it's easy, uh, period, but easier uh, in terms of the skill level of the ninjas overall. I would say. So they started things off with uh, Jackson Twait, who got fast forward the first two times. Uh, so it was nice to see, but he failed the first, the reverse grab section of the falling shelves. So unfortunately, he's out. Um, and then they had Jody Avila, which. Uh, immediately, like, as soon as I saw him as the second run, I audibly uh, said a no-no word of, uh, of disappointment and uh, the realization that uh, I may have been bamboozled by AW's editing. Uh, unless they, once again, were editing a, a really good run in, in the second spot, which they did once this season, but I didn't think they'd do it again. I had a really bad feeling heading into this run, but basically, um, they had a they had a really nice uh, promo package for him, um, just kind of talking about how people say, you know, he's too, he's, you're too big, you're really good for a big guy. It's like, no, I want to be good, period. Which, yeah, I think that's uh, that was, you know, it's a, it's a nice, simple but good package related to Ninja. Um, he survived the diamond dash i wrote he had a close call he kind of just slid into the uh landing area um especially because he hit his leg on the third uh, diamond i believe and uh he was limping a bit uh able to skip some rungs on the, on the spin hopper which is always nice to see and unfortunately for him he uh fell down on slam dunk uh he went transferring to the second wall he lost his grip um he it was more specifically he missed uh the grip on one side and there is no recovery on that and he fell into the water and matt said that he that probably won't be a good enough to move on to the top eight he is currently sitting in eighth place as of the end of this first episode and the odds of everyone doing worse than him uh, that's left is very low so i doubt we'll be seeing jody in the in the top eight so with that said i guess i have to congratulate the a and w editors for fooling the ever-loving crap out of me because when they put him at the end of semi-final one, he, they, fa they fooled me twice. They fooled me because I thought he was going to clear and get the fastest time, but he ended up failing the dungeon instead. And then I thought that the reason they had him at the end was because he must have done really well in the finals. And then it turns out he doesn't make the top eight. And I was completely fooled, completely bamboozled. You, you got the better of me. Um... Good job, honestly. Like, good job, editors. You got me. Uh, one of the common things that happened in this episode is that when they come back from commercial break, they would do some sort of montage of, of clips uh, featuring the ninjas, and then they would transition into one of the other uh, ninjas' uh, profile pieces, stuff like that. Like, for example, they showed a bunch of pets that ninja owners have, and they transitioned to Flip Rodriguez's uh, run um, because of his dog, Maui. 
he uh, was Flip was look, looking good on the course. It's I think one the the downside of this uh, episode in terms of me being able to review it is that I don't have a lot to say uh, over, over a lot of the runs because a lot of it is just a case of oh yeah they were looking really good until they failed or until they cleared. <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of what the commentary is going to end up being. So Flip was looking pretty good until he fell on the dragon back. <laughs> And he fell on uh, the first slide. He was uneven, went crooked, fell down, and he was taken out at that point. He is currently in seventh place on the leaderboard at the end of this episode. I don't think that's going to be good enough. I think he, we won't be seeing him in the Power Tower tournament. Then they showed Jerry Delurio, uh finally getting featured. I believe she got fast forward the first two times. Um, they they featured the uh, the army lawyer stuff. It, it, very bizarre seeing when you see people who got fast forward the first two times and uh, then was shown and featured. And we'll get to a few of those later on this episode. And she unfortunately fell on the flying shelves relatively early, third obstacle. But you know it happens. It happens. But she has like, a good time. And then they showed Michael Torres, and I'm like, ooh, I don't know, what does this mean? I'm not so sure. He was another one of my picks, and he went he went out on the diamond dash. And it's like, oh no, he he banged, he got tripped up, and banged his leg on the third diamond, and he fell into the water, and I was I was just, oh no. Oh no, 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 no. And uh, he was really disappointed. Don't blame him for being disappointed. Uh, but yeah, so already two of my picks for the top eight are gone. They're out. They're, they're, they're not on the list. And that is disappointing. Indeed. But, you know, it happens. It happens. You know, uh, uh, Michael, was having a, Michael was having a good season, but then unfortunately uh, he had a bad run. You know, it happens. It happens. Cameron Baumgarter, uh, the, bi- the main thing I got from his profile is that his mom is loud. <laughs> uh, unfortunately for him, um, he, I can't believe this happened. He was looking really good. He made it to the end of the dragon back, and he didn't dismount at the, en- on the end of the second slide. He, like, hesitated. He held on, and instead of letting go, he fell off the front of the slide. And unfortunately, he smacked the bar in his face, busted open his lip, and then the bar went off track. He was hanging from the bar uh, via the safety cord, which is an auto auto DQ because that is technically going off course. And he was taken out at the dragon back. He could have cleared, but he didn't let go. That was, oh, that was so, I guess, frustrating to see, see someone fail because of hesitation like that, you know? You want to see people do well, but didn't work out. He is currently in sixth place as of the end of this episode. Could have been higher. Could have been higher. But was it meant to be? And then they showed Najee Richardson. Um, this time around, they really mentioned about how last year was a really bad year for him. And it was. He, he just he, statistically he didn't perform very well. Uh, due to various circumstances, and he was taken on the first stage. But then he talked about how coaching kids in A&W Jr. Uh, was, you know, really helped him. And watching A&W Jr. is now a little awkward, considering who one of the coaches was. Just saying. Surprise! They took... Uh, I'll just say this really quickly. NBC took all the seasons of American Ninja Warrior, except for this current one, off of iTunes. Which means I didn't get to buy them uh, in time because um, I didn't think of it. I should have thought of it, but I didn't think of it. And now I can't buy them, and it sucks. Uh, all because of uh, you know Drew. They're they're erasing him from history. And bizarrely, um, as of uh, the last time I checked, the episodes of American Ninja Ju- Ninja Warrior Junior are still up, which featured Drew. Around children. I'm just saying. Very odd priorities. Hey. Hey guys. Um, uh, I don't have a lot of time to talk. I'm uh, currently 
currently hiding. Uh, I don't have a lot of time to explain what's going on, but let's just say I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm in a closet currently. I'm currently currently hiding in a closet. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a there's a big reason, uh, but I can't really talk too much. Uh, but hey, I um. Okay, sorry. I thought I, I thought I heard something. Um, okay, so so this week's comment question. Um, that I like you all to answer for me is um, how do you normally watch American Ninja Warrior? Um, basically, like you know, do you do you watch it at your house? Do you watch it live as it's airing um, on NBC? Do you do you DVR and watch it later? Uh, do you watch it on something like Hulu or on demand? Something like something like that. And um, or uh, and, and and how how do you watch it? Um, do you watch it by yourself? Do you watch it with with friends and family or in some sort of party group? Um, I realize this year might be a little different, uh, given the current circumstances. But let's let's go with how you normally would watch American Ninja Warrior if we weren't in this. Uh, uh, well, in 2020, quite frankly, uh, yeah, that um, that's everything. That yeah, that, that's the common question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, leave a comment question below. Um, I guess now back to the, the rest of the reviewing. Oh, God. But watching... Okay, so... First off, his one-handed save on the flying shelf was really good. And it is a testament to how good his grip strength is. Helps that he's a gymnast and he's used to uh, stuff like this, I imagine. Uh, but after watching this run... One of the th things that I could, I could, I was thinking of was where was this Naji all season? The dude was sk skipped the slides on the dragon back, and then he flew up the uh, spider trap in a way that I was not expecting him to see. And this is based on his performances in the first two rounds. If you remember, in the qualifier round, I mentioned, it's like, yeah, he cleared, but there was, like, something off. You know, I, I mentioned it, you know, in his run, it felt like something was off. You know, he was going kind of slow, stuff like that. In the semifinal run, and in and, and the predictions for, for the finals, I mentioned that I didn't pick Naji uh, to be in the top eight because he was so slow in the semifinals, he was actually the slowest of the six uh, clears, and I just thought, simply based on time, he wouldn't clear fast enough to get into the top eight. And then, all of a sudden, in this run, he just went so much faster. Maybe, maybe, it's because, in this case, time matters a lot more, and he didn't want to chance it, uh, in terms of... Uh, how how fast he needed to clear to get to the top, but this was the Nanji that I've been waiting to see all season, and I finally got it at the end. I was so happy to see that Nanji, and he looked great. Simply put, he looked great. Uh, one of the few people this year so far to clear all three rounds. So at the end of the day, he has that going for him. Uh, there's still a few people next uh, next episode who could claim that also, but um, so far uh, he is one of the few people who could claim that. Afterwards was a Jamie Ron. They did him mid run. What did I say? Screaming during SD. What S slammed? Oh, that's right. Yeah, he was screaming while doing the slam dunk. Uh, which I mean, I couldn't tell if that's like a pumping him up motivation or if that was uh, from pain uh, I'm not really sure but it was interesting to see I like it when people make noise in the course that's just uh, specifically as they're doing the course it, it was it was nice to see uh, emotion from ninjas always is uh, some good stuff um, and unfortunately he fell on the dragon bag also just the first live uh, uneven couldn't couldn't control it went down Dan Polizzi unfortunately went out on the diamond dash. He, similar to Michael Tr Torres, uh, he tripped on the third diamond, and unfortunately his long legs dipped into the water while hanging on to the landing platform. He spent a long time before attempting the obstacle because he was worried uh, his, his tower of power 
uh, partner Brandon Mears said, I understand, buddy, uh, which is totally understandable. Um, one thing that was weird was his profile piece in that it wasn't clear because they talked about the California wildfires. But the one thing that the profile didn't make clear to me, and maybe I just missed it, who knows, is that at first the profile made it sound like he was fighting the California wildfires. But then I realized that none of the footage seemed to be of him in California. And then I realized that, like, isn't he a Chicago ninja? Isn't he a Chicago-based firefighter with Brandon Mears? Am I remembering this wrong? And then, um, like, he's talking about, like, the dangers of fighting fires, but, like, he never actually said he was fighting the fires in California. Very weird. Very weird. It's almost like they wanted to mention the California wildfire since so many of the profiles have been current event related, but like they kind of just slid it in in a, in a weird way. I'm not sure what to think about that, but not that there was anything offensive about it, but just weird, you know? Yeah, it is what it is. Lucas Reale was next. First off, I was so thankful that uh, they finally showed Lucas because he got fast forward the first two rounds despite clearing, not only clearing, but in the first round he was in third place overall. In the second round he, he was in second place overall. They still fast forward him both times, which I, I mean, I, I went into a big old rant uh, in the last review. But I was so happy to see him get featured. He looked fantastic on the course. I, I just, I couldn't believe it. He flew up that spider trap. He, lo he looked so strong and he's currently the leader on the, on the leaderboard. He is the fastest clear. It is a very real possibility that he is going to the power tower playoff. There has to, like, like literally of the remaining, uh, what is it? I said there was 18, it was 16 people so far that they showed. There's 12 people left. That means of those 12 people, eight of them have to do better. That's two thirds of the remaining people have to do better than him. I don't know if that's going to happen. That, that, that's, that's a lot. So he's probably good to make it. And I'm, I'm watching this and I have so many emotions going through it because like Lucas is a great guy. He's, he's, you know, He's a fan of me. I'm a fan of him. And it was so good seeing him uh, get this spotlight because he's, he's, I honestly think that he's a, he's a future champion in the making. But they've done him dirty so much this season. And even then, like seeing him currently in the top spot, I'm like, why did you skip him so much? Like, it's so bizarre. I thought the reason that they skipped him was because like he more or less choked or, or during the finals or just d didn't make it to the power tower. If he doesn't make it to the power tower, I'm going to be shocked, quite frankly. I know we got some, we got some good uh, runs left, but eight of the remaining 12? No. No, I can't see that happening. But yeah, great job, Lucas. Holy crap, that was quite a run. Sandy Zimmerman was up next. Oldest woman, um, oldest person, period. Dan Polizzi was the oldest male. Uh, she unfortunately just, she went out on the third shelf of the flying shelf. You know, just uh, her left hand missed completely. It happens. But she had a great run. She, she I don't know what happened with Sandy, but like prior to, to last season, she didn't really get featured a lot and unfortunately didn't really perform well in the qualifiers. Now, all of a sudden, it's like something happened between season 10 and 11. She just poof, shot up in, in skill, and it's great. It's great to see her do well. Because I've been a fan of her before she got uh, featured, uh, partially cause, just because of that picture of her in Nagano. And Nagano going, hey, look at those abs. She's got great abs. Uh, then my boy, Donovan Mottoria, was featured in the suits, and looking all classy and good and stylish and i'm like oh man oh please do well please do well and then unfortunately he went out on the spin hopper 
he had uh, unfortunate hand placement and it just just wasn't meant to be um he is officially out oh well hey you know what you did well donovan look forward to seeing you crushing it next year my friend um, and then was Nash was Austin Gray, who was featured in the National Kidney Foundation uh, commercials, uh, doing PSAs. I dropped my book. And, um, <clears throat> okay, I got to say something to Mr. Gray. So, uh, Austin, um, I have seen your comments <laughs> on my prediction videos. Uh, for those of you who don't know, on both my semifinal and final prediction videos, uh, Austin left the comment interesting dot 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 at the end uh, 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 on my videos. And um, I w was very confused about what the actual uh, emotion was uh, being conveyed. Um, and I, it, it is worth mentioning that both times I did not pick him to move on to the next round. Um, I'll say this. So, I said this in the past, it's very hard to, you know, pick, only pick so many people when you know there's a hard cutoff for the number of people who can move on. And the fact that you got fast forwarded in the first two rounds is uh, was part of the process for why I didn't pick you uh, in either round. You know, um, it, 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 and then all of a sudden they show him, and he does great. He looked great. He cleared 440, currently in third place. Uh, I was I was dumbfounded. Uh, once again, similar to Lucas, it's like how. You, you you skip him twice. You fast forward him twice. And now he kills it. Keep in mind, Austin, like Lucas and Najee, have have cleared the course all three rounds. <laughs> and and yet Austin and Lucas, they, they they didn't get featured in the first two rounds. It was so so head scratching to me, you know? Just I'm just like I, I, I don't get it. But yeah, I'm sorry. I guess I'm sorry for for downing you, Mr. Gray. Uh, blame A and W a little bit, you know. But yeah, very impressive. I guess maybe I won't underestimate you anymore in the future. And then they returned from commercial break, and uh, actually, after Austin Gray's run, they finally showed the leaderboard as it currently stands. It was weird that they showed it like three quarters of the way in right before the second to last commercial break because only one spot changed you know when they showed uh the leaderboard uh, uh donovan was in eighth place at the time and jody avila was in seventh and now jody is in eighth at the end of the episode but it's weird that they showed it so late um i do like them showing the leaderboard mid episode hopefully they do a little bit more my hope is that every time uh, in this next episode, every time someone makes it onto the leaderboard, they update it and they show the people who are on the bubble. Like, so for, for next week's episode, I want to see Jody on the bubble. I want to see them say, hey, Jody's on the bubble, and then someone beats him, and he's eliminated. And then, you know, so-and-so is on the bubble, and the, I, want, I want that drama, because we're, we're towards the end, you know, and we're getting to the point, because... Uh, cause, because um, it's only going to take five runs next week before we start locking in the top eight. So after the first five runs, whoever's in first place is guaranteed to be in that top eight final tournament. So I want to see more of that. And then uh, next they showed uh, Tyler Gillette. Um, it is rather unfortunate um, them recapping his cousin Bill. Again, because um, I have since, like I said last week, uh, it has since been revealed that, unfortunately, uh, Bill passed away. Very sad. Uh, you know, it's, it, it sucks. You know, again, condolences to Tyler and his family and Bill's family and all that. And um, very, you know, very unfortunate. Uh, what was also very unfortunate is that he failed spring forward. And that, I think... That was the loudest I yelled all night because I was shocked. I, I there was a very loud oh ah, you know, very 
surprised by what I saw. And uh, it, it didn't feel good, man. Very disappointing. You know, I was hoping, I was hoping the best for Tyler. Um, I know I, I technically didn't pick him, but would have loved to have been proven wrong. You know what I mean? Uh, then again, I was shocked again. They showed Chris DeGangi and he failed the falling shelves. And I'm just like, what's going on? Why are all these top, you got Torres, you have Chris, you have Tyler, all these people failing early, these top ninjas failing early. What's going on guys? I don't know. But then they wrap things up with Jesse LeBrecht as the final run of the episode. Not the final run of the night. It's kind of like really cheap to say that because it's manufactured. But um, when they saved Jesse LeBrecht for the end, I kind of figured... I, I had a very strong feeling that she was going to clear. Or at the very least make it into the top eight currently... I wasn't sure which one way it was going to go. Because the way that it's been edited so far this season, there has been some surprises. And sometimes they call me off guard. So I admit that like I wasn't so sure in regards to the editing anymore. But there's not much to say other than that she looked really good and she cleared. And honestly, like I was, I was, I guess, I don't know the right way to describe it. I was nervous. Uh, when she was on the dragon back, because I was thinking to myself, okay, this is taking out a few of the few top competitors so far. Uh, let's see how she does. And she cleared. She and as soon as she cleared, I th I said she's she's going to beat the whole course. Uh, she's going to hit that buzzer because I knew that she can do the spider trap, and she did do the spider trap and cleared. And uh, much to my surprise. Uh, we have a woman uh, clearing the course. I honestly, I wasn't, it's not that I didn't think a woman was going to clear the course when I did my top eight. It's just that I saw how all the women did in the semifinals and I thought, well, if it's of a similar difficulty, the odds of them clearing, not even just not even similar difficulty, similar skill set, I should say. The odds of them clearing is going to be, you know, it's going to be tough. Plus, you know, there's the time factor. Like, even if you clear, it doesn't mean you get into the top eight. But right now, she's in the top eight. She's currently in fourth place. The downside of her run is that she's currently the slowest of the people who cleared. She gets seven and a half minutes, which is almost three full minutes slower than Austin Gray. That's, that's the bad news. The good news is, is that if... Uh, less than five people clear faster than her, then she's in. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, next week, there's a lot of good people left. Uh, you know, uh, off the top of my head, I know we got RJ Roman, we got Jake Murray, we got Joe Moroski, we got Adam Rail, we got uh, Jesse Graff, the final woman, and more next week uh, on American Ninja Warrior Finals. <laughs> but overall, um, I enjoyed this episode. I liked not seeing fast forwards, just seeing all these runs and not knowing what to expect. The, this was unpredictable. Overall, a, a, in terms of editing, unpredictable. Um, the course itself, it, you know, it's unfortunate that it, it contains a bunch of uh, returning obstacles from the season, uh, from previous seasons. But the course itself was actually fine. Uh, the new obstacles uh, were fun to watch. I really like Dragon Back. Uh, so overall, uh, for what it was, I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed this first half. Looking forward to seeing how the remaining competitors do and seeing that top eight finals. And that is my thoughts. Really enjoyed it. Recommend it if you haven't watched it yet. And we'll have to wait and see who wins next week. I'm looking forward to it big time. But hey... Thank you all very much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And hey, why don't you watch some of my other reviews of American Ninja Warrior. But until next time. Happy Halloween, everyone. Later.